Okay, so now it's 11 o'clock, so let's start this uh, seminar officially. So welcome everybody. My name is Nina Jackson, and it's so nice to see so many of you here today, even though we are nearly already uh, having our Christmas holidays. And uh, this is Brown Bag Research Lunch Seminar. And uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, I'm gonna explain very briefly what brown bag seminars are about. So the aim of these seminars is to highlight the top level research conducted here at the University of Oulu, and also um, discuss uh, how different research fields share a common ground. And uh, yes, the aim is really to like uh, have discussion in between different fields. And uh, we are going to discuss uh, different research topics uh, our researchers here at Uniolu are passionate about and uh, during this autumn the themes of these brown bag seminars are linked to the horizon europe programs key strategic orientation themes and uh, these events uh, are provided to you by the university of Oulu focus institutes, research, support services, and the unique unit of strategy and science policy. And today's theme is creating a more resilient, inclusive, and democratic European society. And our speakers of today are Helga Lisa Hentila, professor in urban design and planning, Oulu School of Architecture, Faculty of Technology, Johanna Leinonen, Academy Research Fellow uh, from History, Culture and Communication Studies, Faculty of Humanities, and Johanna Hiitola, University Lecturer, Gender Studies, Faculty of Education. So we have very multidisciplinary uh, speakers here today. And without a further ado, I would like to hear the day's first presentation. So I will give the virtual floor and stage to Professor Helga Lisa. Okay, if we can get your okay, now we have yes. a picture and the audio. Great. Yes, both. So good uh, morning, everybody. Nice to have you online somewhere spread around the Oulu region campus and maybe maybe some other locations as too. So the topic of my presentation is resistant cities, urban planning as means for pandemic prevention, recipe. And uh, it's a project that got quite recently funding from the Strategic Research Council, which is part of Academy of Finland, uh, and from the pandemics program of this Strategic Research Council call. And the project time uh, and the project runs from this autumn till the end of 24. Uh, and well, we got funding decision in mid-September and it was stated there that the project started already in early September. So it, had, it has been a quite busy autumn for me to put <laughs> this whole project up and running since I'm the principal investigator of the whole multidisciplinary consortium. And the funding, what we got is, is decent. I would say it's 3.68 million euros. Uh, and what is this project about and why such a project? So although the environment has long time been recognized as a key determinant of health, so the linkages between infectious diseases and urban living environments are not well known. Further, the consideration of infectious disease prevention in the contemporary urban planning has largely been neglected. 
and this causes a future risk of using public and private resources in planning and building urban living environments that are not capable of effectively supporting citizens' security and health against pandemic outbreaks, nor supporting their health and well being. So that's why in this recipe project, we explore the role of urban living environments and the potential of urban planning in anticipation and prevention of infectious diseases and thus pandemic outbreaks. And we have a very ambitious impact vision, like we would like, we are our work, and together with all those partners that are involved to this project, to contribute, be part of this kind of global paradigmatic change towards evidence-based urban planning for healthier living environments that prevent pandemic outbreaks and support human well-being overall. So our key question is, how could urban planning be used as means in anticipating infectious diseases and thus preventing further epidemic outbreaks. Uh, other questions are, since we learn from the history, is how the challenge of infectious diseases has been acknowledged and tackled by means of urban planning in the context of earlier pandemics and major epidemics. We have a specific work package for that. Uh, what kind of evidence exists of the relationship between urban build and natural environments and health and well being and infectious diseases? We have actually two work packages focusing on these issues. And then, rely, uh, relying on these three previous work packages, so what kind of urban planning strategies and solutions should be implemented to prevent infectious diseases? And then further, so what knowledge gaps exist on different levels of decision-making connected with health and infectious diseases in urban planning and how to create knowledge with interaction and communication activities? So the research methods, what we are going to use include, well, comparative longitudinal studies, microbiome analysis, advanced GIS analysis, participatory action research, and design-driven problem solving. And we use, of course, since this is a multidisciplinary project with the size of, let's say, five to six normal <laughs> academic projects, so we use very different kind of research data and different work packages, including land cover and land use data, historical documents related to urban development and planning, large population data like birth cohorts and population and health register data. So, and what we are aiming to do, so we, aim to provide new scientific knowledge and evidence base of the link with linkages between urban living environments and health. We are aiming to deepen societal understanding of these linkages. That's something that's very specific for this strategic research funding project. So you need to somehow cope and interact with the rest of the society and decision making. Uh, then we further explore multidisciplinary analysis methods of large register data, since we put and link this kind of register data that has not really been linked before. We also develop modern ana urban analysis and health impact assessment methods for resistant urban planning, the current ways how health is dealt in urban planning are not sufficient. And this is somehow doing a difference in that sense as well. Then we also aim to pilot innovative societal interaction concepts 
and encourage cross-sector discussions and integrative policies between urban planning and health sectors, which are quite separated at the moment. And in the end, we propose policy briefs for health and prevention of infectious diseases in the context of urban planning and as part of the Finnish strategy of comprehensive security. So these are the, how to say, aims of the project. And I as already mentioned, so this is a multidisciplinary project. So we combine expertise from the disciplines of environmental research, environmental health, geography, health history, information studies, public health, and urban planning. Uh, the project is organized into six work packages. Well, you understand there needs to be a substantial part of management and coordination since it's such a big project, so I'm responsible of that. Then we have another work package which is uh, focused on interaction and communication. And there we have uh, information science from University of Oulu, Faculty of Humanities, and Anna Suorsa who is also the interaction uh, PI of the whole project. Then we have a work package dedicated to pandemics and epidemics in urban planning history. And also there, University of Oulu, Faculty of Humanities and Health History and Docent Heini Hakosalo is the key player. Uh, we have a work package uh, which focuses on biodiversity and soil microbiome, and there we have the Luke Finnish Natural Resources Institute and research professor Hanno Fritze um, in, in charge, and he's also the co-PI of the whole consortium. And then we have a work package five uh, with two players, and there the focus is on environmental impacts on health and well-being. Uh, Paul Deaconess Institute, ODL, uh, uh, with Professor Raja Korpelainen, and then University of Oulu Center for um, Respiratory uh, Environmental and Respiratory Health, uh, Docentina Ikäheimo is, is involved. And then we have finally the sixth work package of urban planning solutions and policies, which somehow sums up all the learnings from the previous packages to be put to the contemporary urban, urban planning. So it's again, University of Oulu urban planning and docent Emilia Rönke from the Oulu School of Art. And then we have an additional consortium member, which is PILHA, an organization focusing on respiratory health, so it's Professor Tuula Asankari who will be, and her team will be part in this interaction and communication activities package. So quite a big bunch of people. And here you see, and this is from our kickoff a couple of weeks ago, and about 10 people are missing since, well, you all know we have this pandemic still going on. So they participated online of different reasons, but it's, quite a lovely bunch of people from different disciplines making this all happen. But as I mentioned, we have also uh, many other cooperators and partners in this project. So uh, societal stakeholders we are going to collaborate very keenly are, for example, United Nations Habitat Program, Ministry of the Environment, Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare, so THOL, uh, Finnish Association of Municipalities in Finnish, that's Kuntaliitto, a Confederation of Finnish Construction Industries, so that's Rakennusteollisuus. And then we have, how to say, two associations mm, who, who deal with planning and design, so it's Finnish Association of Architects, SAFA. Uh, uh, and the Finnish Association of Landscape Industries, so that's Viherylperistö Liitto. And then we have Finnish Library Association, since we are planning to do this kind of public events with libraries. Uh, Metsähallitus, um, well, I don't know what PP as HP is in English, I know what it is in Finnish, so Pohjois-Pohjanmaan Sairaanhoitopiiri, 
Oulu Innovation Alliance, and then we have five cities which are involved in different roles, Helsinki, Kuopio, Oulu, Rovaniemi, and Vanta. And then we have a bunch of academic collaborators. I'm not going to read the list through. It may sound exhausting, but when you think that we have, we have six work packages with several senior researchers involved, so we have planned, planned different kind of activities in different work packages with these different research institutes and universities around the world that are coping a little bit of similar themes or are much interested in what we do. Also, research mobility is planned together with these. These international and also partly Finnish, Finnish partners like the Finnish Met Meteorological Institute. Well, and here you see our, how to say, <laughs> um, scheme. So we have in the core, there is really this interaction and co-creation to get there with the societal partners and with these uh, research work packages, BP three, four, five, and six feed into this middle where we have this interaction and co-creation activities planned and operated by VP1 and VP2. And just to mention an example, so what kind of societal interaction have we planned? So we have mm, conceptualized different ways to interact with stakeholders. Well, the first one is actually it's an internal, so recipe room. So we organize research seminars, which are more how to say academic. But then the rest, the rest four are outwards reaching interaction activities. We have recipe refinery, which is about co-creation workshops and hackathons. Then we have recipe rotunda events, which are more this kind of traditional discussion panel seminar type of events. And the aim is to deepen understanding of the research topic. And then we have recipe rumbles, which are more this kind of pop up, up event type where these libraries could act as platforms and we try to reach citizens. And then we have recipe agents which are voluntary citizens doing testing and piloting, especially in the work package six, where new ways for urban planning, health focused urban planning is, is developed. Okay, I think that was that about our project. And here you see the contact information, my email, and then interaction PI, as I mentioned, is Anna Sorsa, and our communication officer is Anna Maya Multa, also from the Faculty of Humanities, Information Science, and our Twitter feed you can see there. The, the internet pages are still under construction since we have just got the uh, offers from different um, partners of University All we need to use in creating external internet pages. So they will be up and running in the beginning of next year. But thank you from my behalf. Thank you, Helka Lisa. Such a wonderful presentation. It, this is really a huge project. It's, it's like a very huge mm. and uh, very multidisciplinary. I think like there are so many questions from my side and also from the audience. But uh, before we go to the questions, uh, Let's let's have today's another presentation and, and then like uh, go into the audience questions. So thank you so much. Such a big and interesting project, really. So next we have uh, Johanna Leinonen, Academy Research Fellow, and Johanna Hiitola, University Lecturer. And as I mentioned uh, before, uh, they come from the uh, Faculty of Humanities and Faculty of Education. So please, uh, you can continue with, with your presentation. The virtual stage is yours. Thanks so much, Nina, and thanks for inviting us uh, to talk about our project as well today. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. So just let me know if you can see it okay. 
I'm going to start and then Johanna Hidra will, uh, the other Johanna <laughs> will uh, continue and talk more about one of the work packages that we are we're doing here in Aulu. Uh, can you see my screen now okay? Yeah, it's perfect. It's full screen and your audio is also good. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so uh, the project that I'm talking about today is called Mobile Futures, Diversity, Trust and Two-Way Integration. And we also got funding this fall um, from the SRC. And this is a seven year project. So it's just started in October and it will go on until uh, September, 2027. Uh, if if all stars are aligned correctly, that you know the funding was first granted for three years, and then the decision for the following two years will come later. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any beautiful group picture to show, like uh, Helga Lisa had. Uh, we had our kickoff meeting completely online, but hopefully, um, the plan is that the whole group would get together in March. So hopefully, that will that will happen. So anyway, um, the project. PI is Professor Magdalena Kmak at Obagademi University. She's Professor of International Law, and I'm the Deputy PI of this consortium. And um, you can see the partner universities there. So Obagademi University, Oulu University of Turku, and the Migration Institute of Finland, which is actually also in Turku. So most of the research will be done in Oulu and Turku in this project. And so we got funding in the demographic call. Um, and one of the things that the SRC um, said in the call when they were, when, when it was released last year or a year ago, that uh, it's essential to examine how demographic changes will shape the Finnish society and how the changes can be adapted to and influenced. So what we kind of decided to focus on is this last part. So how could we adapt to the future demographic changes and how they change Finnish society. And I should mention that the group of us who planned this project, we are uh, all scholars of international migration. So uh, it's a very interdisciplinary field in itself, of course. And uh, this is kind of the viewpoint from which we approached this call. So when we were planning this um, project, um, we kind of made two observations related to migration um, and, and its role in demographic changes. One of them has to do more with public discussions and the other one is a more scholarly one. So first of all, um, what we have, what we noticed and what I'm sure many, many of you have noticed as well is that there are nowadays in the media frequent discussions about how Finland needs more international migration or we Finland needs to attract international talent to fill certain gaps in the labor market. I, you know, nowadays there's a lot of talk about that we need workers in the IT sector or the healthcare sector and so on and so forth. And then the second of the observation uh, has more to do with research and particularly demographic research on, on well, demographic changes and migration. None of us, I should mention at this point, that are demographers. So I'm really kind of happy that SRC decided to also fund a project that is not um, really about demographic research. <laughs> But anyway, um, what we found out when we kind of looked at the demographic literature on these issues is that um, what the researchers are saying is that migration can potentially help combat the population decline, but in order to actually stop the deterioration of the demographic dependency ratio, which refers to the ratio between working age and non-working age population, uh, the rate of migration would need to be so actually a much higher than it is today. Um, and in Finland, the case is that um, without international migration, Finland's population would have started to decline already a few years ago. But um, actually to offset population aging, which is one of those key issues of demographic change, is the fact that our population is getting older. So to actually offset population aging, the rate of migration would need to be very high. And since we are approaching this from the perspective of critical migration scholars, um, kind of the two things that we were thinking about was that first of all, in this public de debates, migrants and migration is often treated in a very instrumental way. So the migrants are kind of as 
like a resource that is brought to Finland to fill a particular gap in the labor market. And so it's a very instrumental way of approaching people who would come to Finland or who are already here and kind of what is forgotten there that they are also people with their own, uh, you know, hopes and desires. Um, and then secondly, that we know that because the current migration regimes are so restrictive in Europe and the popular opinion is also often quite against increasing migration. So the fact that we, the migration rates would considerably increase in the future in Europe is not likely to be very realistic. And then I should still add one more thing that um, when we looked at the economic research on these issues, what we found out is that the, the an increase in the share of the working age population through migration would uh, help this situation in the future only if migrants' employment rate is high. But what is the case nowadays in Finland in the, and the other Nordic countries is that um, we have one of the highest, uh, the largest employment gaps between the native-born population and, from, and migrants from outside the European Union or the European Economic Area. So basically what we decided that, of course, it's important to critically look at the labor market in Finland and how labor market integration, for example, works in Finland, but this alone is not enough. So even if migrants find employment in Finland, they may still choose to immigrate again if they or their family members don't feel included, if they feel socially and culturally excluded. And there is research that shows that Finland has a hard time retaining highly skilled migrants or uh, foreign students who come here to complete um, degrees in higher education. And there's also lots of reports that show that um, many minorities, especially racialized minorities, face racism and discrimination in the labor market and in other societal spheres. And I'm really talking about the structural racism here and not, not so much about um, everyday racism. What typically when in Finland you talk about racism, people think about everyday racism, which is important to talk about as well. But here are more talking about the structural discrimination and racism. So there is a clear disjuncture here. So there is this call for international talent, but, the, but at the same time, there's people in the country, there's talent in the country that isn't recognized as such. And secondly, that, that work is not enough, that also the terms of work um, matter and, and the life outside work. I was talking about this project to uh, David Delahanty, who works uh, in Talent Boost in, at the University of Oulu, and he put it very well. He said that having a job is one thing and having a life is another thing. So this is something that we kind of want to look at here in this project. And we, we kind of took also inspiration from recent OECD and European Commission's reports that say that uh, a more inclusive and just society is more resilient in the face of the challenges brought by the demographic changes. So what we are really trying to do is not humble at all. It's that we are trying to make Finland more inclusive and just society. And let's see in six years how we have actually managed to do that. But anyway, so uh, what we are saying that we need to critically look at Finnish society, its structures and its practices. And uh, if we really want to be able to attract people to move and stay in Finland. So managing the impact of demographic changes in the long term requires a reassessment of integration policies and practices. So what we want to do here is we want to look at integration, but we want to look at integration as a thing that or as a process that does not apply to migrants, but it applies to the whole society. And we need to take a critical look at the racist and discriminatory practices in Finland. So how are we doing this? So we decided to take the concept of trust in focus and uh, look at integration from the perspective of trust, the trust building, societal, so social and, and um, institutional trust. And why are we talking about trust? So typically in international comparisons, the Nordic countries are seen as being characterized by high levels of political and societal trust. But when it comes to migration, it's interesting because um, what some studies have found out is that the level of trust, especially in Finnish institutions, is initially higher among many migrant groups. But um, because of ex every experiences of everyday and structural discrimination, uh, distrust can erode over time. 
um, when the longer they stay in Finland. So in an ironic way, uh, if we understand integration as something that happens gradually over time when one lives in a new country, then in Finland sometimes this means that the person's trust towards the society in which in which they live actually decreases over time. So what we see is that even though Finland has a very robust integration system, the current approach doesn't necessarily succeed in fostering good, good uh, societal relations that are the basis for a resilient welfare society. And we decided then to focus on the concept of trust here. And we take inspiration from critical integration research, um, which has recently criticized that in integration research, the society where the integration take place, takes place is usually kind of understood as being the neutral setting where integration happens. And the integration is the responsibility and often the problem of migrants and their children. So what we kind of want to do, we, we want to turn this lens the other way around and just look at the whole society and see integration as something that applies to the whole society, both the native born and the foreign born. And we see integration as this gradual process of increasing intergroup and institutional trust. Um, yeah. And so we have um, four work packages in this um, project. We have work package one, which is steered by um, University of Turku, which focuses on trust in law. Then uh, work package two looks at trust in information and is steered by Obo Academy University. Uh, then work package three looks at labor market issues. It's steered by Migration Institute of Finland. And then uh, the work package four, everyday encounters focuses, uh, is steered by um, the University of Oulu. And the researchers here in Oulu are mostly doing research in the work packages on labor market and everyday encounters. And therefore I will just, oh yeah, before actually I get to work packages, just a couple of words about the actual uh, co uh, composition of the consortium. As I mentioned, Magdalena Kmak is the PI and I'm the deputy PI. Sara Bellander, who's the director of the Migration Institute of Finland, she's the interaction coordinator. Um, you can see the other work package leaders there, Dr. Daniela Alatinoglu from University of Turku, Professor Kunila Viden from the Oko Academy University, and uh, Dr. Eli Heikla from the Migration Institute of Finland. And then in the steering group, we have people from um, the Center for Expertise on Immigrant Integration at the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Employment and Economic Affairs, uh, Ethno Secretariat from the Ministry of Justice, Peter Karayuki from there. Then we have the NGO Moniheli Aru, Abdirahim Hussein, who's the executive director there. And then we have Elipeka Pelkonu from the Multicultural Center Villa Victor at the city of Oulu. So they are the steering group members and the point. And of course, each work package has lots of collaborators in different, uh, from different sectors of society. And each work package, uh, there will be these, uh, they are called living labs. So each work package will have their own living lab, which basically means that we are meeting a few times a year here with people who are specialists in integration issues in one way or another, and other actors from relevant institutions. And we are together in identifying, identifying research questions, talking about preliminary research findings and kind of finding ways to translate the research findings into actual, into actual practical tools to, tools to revise, revise integration practices and policies in Finland. And then I just say a couple of words um, about the labor, labor market um, work package, which is the work package number three, where um, which is led by Migration Institute of Finland. I'm looking at the time that time is running so fast that I will just say this very quickly <laughs> before I give the floor to Johanna, who will talk about the everyday encounters labor market. So we are looking here, um, trust building in the labor market and experiences and interpretations of structural discrimination and racism. And the people who will be who will, we will be doing research with, with include job seekers, including students who are um, trying to find a job, employees who have entered jobs, employers hiring them, and educational key persons, and key persons and gatekeepers. And basically, we are trying to find out or uh, recognize the key mechanisms 
and pr processes where uh, structural discrimination and racism or trust and mutual understanding emerge in the labor market and also practical tools to combat these um, issues, the structural racism and discrimination and then smoothen the labor market paths of migrants. But I will just now give the floor to uh, Johanna who can tell more about the work package that is um, led by us here in all. Go ahead, Johanna. Thank you, Johanna. I think we used more than our 15 minutes already. Um, but, <laughs> but sorry, sorry. It's, it's, it's but, okay. okay, you can, you can continue. Okay, I'll just, I'll just be very brief. Um, um, we thought that I would say just a couple of words of what we are actually doing in Oulu, because many of these um, work packages are um, done actually in other institutions. So, so um, can you uh, change the slide, Johanna? Okay, thank you. Um, so, so our our goal here in Oulu, and actually it was so interesting to um, hear Helga Lisa's presentation because we are also um, looking at place and and especially um, especially place in terms of trust and how how migrants and other local residents um, develop trust in different encounters which are ingrained in place relations. Um, so uh, we, um, we look at relations and development of social mistrust of three societal groups. We, um, we um, work with migrant and non-migrant origin youth. Um, we, uh, we look at aging uh, migrants and stay-at-home mothers. And, and the, um, really when we uh, have this concept of two-way integration, so to speak, we we try to stay away from this very narrow-minded view of integration as something that um, is uh, the responsibility of a particular person, a migrant who um, who uh, is living here in, in Finland or in Oulu in our work package, or actually we work in Oulu and Turku. And, and we try to uh, really focus on the on the different societal relations. Um, the study here in Oulu is conducted both in history and gender studies, and also in our work package, there are a couple um, researchers. Um, oh, actually, yes, Evelina Lykinen from Migration Institute, and then also Opo Academy. And you can put the last slide. So, so place attachment is the focus of especially the um, work done here in Oulu. And by that, we mean the emotional ties and social and material connections that people build to place. And we see this as a, a crucial component of integration. And, and our methodologies include walking interviews, photo elicited interviews and institutional ethnography here in Oulu. Of course, the larger project has a lot more um, methodological variety like Hel Helka Lisa said. So, so we really want to uh, look at attachment to place also in connection to alternative subcultures, religious groups, uh, hobbies, these kind of uh, um, uh, uh, points of attachment that are often not um, spoken about or, or discussed in integration studies. Um, we use this term plug-in possibilities uh, when we think about what are the actual keys to the city for, for the inhabitants. And, um, and we also, we look at different life stages of different uh, gender expression, sexualities, societal and class background, so we have this intersectional uh, understanding in our research. And, um, and the desired results, I think this is uh, directly from our project plan. Uh, we hope to gain an understanding of how place-bound social relations influence social mistrust and in integration, and also produce knowledge about the impact of institutional mistrust for integration and develop tools for addressing social and institutional mistrust of people at different life, life stages, like, like was mentioned before. But um, 
this is what we are hoping to do in Oulu. Um, please, please, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the questions and I can, I can say more if there are interest in our specific work package. Okay, thank you. Thank you both, Johannes. I think we still have nicely time for having conversation. And uh, this is also such an interesting and a multidisciplinary project. And uh, we like uh, we're here discussing with Anu, our other, other host, that this topic is so important and, and so current. And, uh, and uh, let's start with the questions. So we have here in chat actually already one question, and this question um, goes to Helka Lisa. So uh, Jussi Pakari is asking, uh, what kind of pre assumptions do you have concerning the interaction between human health and urban environment? Large topic, but briefly. Oh, yeah, that's really a large <laughs> topic. So if one talks in general about human health and urban environment, so we have certain pre assumptions. Like we know that, for example, an environment where people can walk tends to prevent their health in many ways. So that's very briefly to put that. And then, of course, we know certain markers like noise and pollution and so on and so on. They are not good for people, people's health in general. But that, that's really a <laughs> huge topic. But this specific theme for the uh, SRC program pandemics and our, how to say, specific theme, infectious diseases and urban planning. That's very, there doesn't very much research exist of the contemporary situation, but it's coming. We feel like the earth is sh shaking. It's coming all the time more and more. Thank you, Helga Lisa. And uh, we have a lot of comments in chat that, uh, thanking uh, the speakers for your very interesting presentations. And, and just to say at this point, you can put your questions to the chat or you can also uh, open your mic like uh, to, to ask a question. But like uh, we have here uh, Linda Omod Omodara asking question via chat. Uh, Hi, how can I, I an immigrant in politics uh, get actively involved in your projects? Is this possible? I am especially interested in immigrants uh, two-way two integration. Maybe this question is for Johannes, I, I suppose. Yes, uh, but if you're interested in becoming involved, maybe you could just send us an email actually because um, uh, there, are, there is a group of migration scholars here at the University of Oulu, and we are hoping starting next year to start more regular meetings uh, where we can discuss, of course, issues related to this project, but also, you know, research that others are doing. So I would say um, that, of course, we want to get to know about your research, Linda, and you would be very really welcome to, you know, meet with us if you would like. So maybe you can just send us an email. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, I could also ask you uh, one question at this point. So maybe like uh, both uh, Helga Lisa and, and Johannes could uh, answer to this one. So our topic of today is uh, creating a more resilient, inclusive and democratic European society. But like, how would you summarize um, how your research topics and your projects are linked to this specific theme? Well, if I may start, so I think that every citizen has a right to a sustainable, resilient and good health supporting living environment. So I think the link is somehow, somehow there. And then we know that Europe is much about um, urban Europe, Europe as well. And urbanization. It's not only European trend, but it's a global trend. So more and more people are living in urban, urban environments. And since urban planning is um, in all European countries is of 
public interest and it's part of public governance. So somehow being able to, to <laughs> create urban environments that support people's health and uh, are uh, able to, to offer this kind of uh, democratic experience of, <laughs> of healthy <laughs> urban living environments are, are somehow very much in, in this uh, theme, I would say. I, maybe I can start and Johanna, please go ahead after me. But I, I think in our project, this is exactly the core of what we are doing and, and our aims and our goals to develop the tools um, um, in, in the Mobile Futures project goes to, especially to this theme. So, um, so yes, Johanna, please continue. But, but, but it was really nice to be um, speaking under this uh, specific theme as we feel that this is also really the focus of our large project. I don't think I have anything to add because when I read your question, Nina, that you sent, you sent this, this question beforehand when I saw it, I was like, this is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> so I don't know what else to say that I haven't already said. But anyway, yes, I just concur with Johan. Yeah, so no need to elaborate further because it's just like a, uh, it, it hits the spot, <laughs> exactly. So. Uh, and, and how about like, uh, how, how can you elaborate on how your research topics like uh, your, your project, Johannes and, and Helkalis's project, how are they connected to each other? Well, one could say <laughs> briefly like, well, we got funding from the same source, <laughs> but yeah. that's maybe not, <laughs> not all what we can say, but, uh, they are both projects that are very multidisciplinary and that tackle societal challenges that need somehow multidisciplinary research or approach to be tackled. So that's maybe one thing. And I would say that uh, we also um, critically look at societal structures or patterns. Maybe in our research, it's more physical <laughs> structures uh, but also, I was very interested to hear that you look also the, how to say, physical uh, or spatial encounters in your project. So that's also linked to the physical living environment somehow. So that was a, a joint, joint point. And then one thing that I think it, it's common, it's engage research approach. Mm -hmm. So we are really trying to engage citizens, stakeholders, decision makers, different groups to this project. So yeah, engage research maybe is this kind of joint big umbrella above these two. I was, I was really thinking about place and especially here in Oulu, I think our focus is in um, like place relations and place yes. as a spatial, um, actual material places where the encounters happen. So. So I was really happy to hear that maybe we share some um, interests and maybe maybe we can even get together in the future, Helga Lisa, and think about what kind of, we might have some uh, common questions actually, or what do you think, Johanna? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And one thing that I was thinking when I was thinking about this question is also that how, you know, there's research showing internationally how uh, also the way pandemics like the COVID, hits you know particular communities uh, it's also you know very much tied with structural inequalities so the people who have been in many many countries it's been for example racialized minorities that have been most hard hit by the pandemic so the way the pandemic kind of works <laughs> it, at the local level it's really it is tied to these kind of structural inequalities as well Thank you. And as we saw from the registration uh, form, we have people here, we should have people here from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, different faculties. So like uh, now at this point, I would like to uh, let the audience just like bravely open your mic or ask questions uh, via chat uh, from our today's speakers. And I know that we also have people here from Unique, 
project listening to today's presentations. So you might also have some like a very, very good questions uh, to our speakers. So please uh, don't hesitate to open your mic or ask questions via chat. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Hello, Johanna. We can hear you. Hi. <laughs> yes, I thought maybe one more Johanna to the discussion. So uh, I I just wanted to thank you for the presentations. And I, I don't have any specific comment, but just to confirm that indeed these are really relevant topics uh, what comes to this unique alliance. And uh, we have this super diversity as one topic and uh, then uh, also this engaged research uh, as, as a methodological framework uh, in this um, in this new horizon uh, project which has started and, and has a purpose to to form this kind of um, joint uh, engaged research framework among the unique universities so so i think in in, in both of these two Two, two ways at least uh, it's very good that we have these these two projects uh, now starting at the same time so these can support each other and i know that we have already with johanna lane and we have been discussing when you were making the application that we would uh, find connections to these uh, unique city labs uh, actions that that this could be somehow linked and i think it would benefit uh, us and hopefully also your your project so so this is what i wanted to to say and then then one more comment uh, related to the super diversity i mean helga knows because you have been involved in this unique unique preparation phase already and uh, and that time we were thinking and wondering that how how can we argue and and think about this super diversity concept in Oulu specifically compared to Rotterdam, which, which is so much more diverse in, 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 in a way. So um, now I heard that um, this um, Vertovec, who has been the person who has been uh, introducing this concept of super diversity and working on it, I, I heard that, that, that he has said that he's no longer maybe talking about super diversity but more like complexity if i if i got it right so i don't know if you know something about it but i, I found this very interesting comment because i tried myself um, to get a bit more familiar by reading and, and listening something regarding this super diversity so i don't know if you johanna know something more about this new thinking of, of not perhaps any more talking about super diversity, but complexity. But but this is just one comment that, that came to my mind. But anyway, thank you, and I hope to continue this collaboration. So, which thank uh, you, Johanna, for your question. <laughs> which Johanna do you want to answer? <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Johanna, you tried to say something. Maybe. Right? Yeah, I was. Uh, Maybe just thinking about the Vertovec's concept, I have always felt like the feminist discussion on intersectionality is, uh, in my mind, a lot more useful in that in that sense. Um, but but um, yeah, <laughs> I have always wondered why why is this concept not used and why is this super diversity that um, the um, desired concept that I don't know what Johanna Leinonen thinks. This is maybe a academic discussion. <clears throat> I had said, I'm not sure. I, it's funny that you say that because I was just in a meeting uh, with some of the unique collaborators when we were talking about the plans for the PhD program funding application. And then we talked about the con con uh, concept of complexity there and people were very critical of that co <laughs> concept of complexity. So I, I'm I'm confused. I don't know. I'm not okay. sure. Okay, maybe maybe I've understood something wrong. <laughs> and super diversity is indeed more or less about intersectionality, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I really suggest thinking about intersectionality. <laughs> 
but good to hear that that even you as as top uh, experts on this field you find these concepts like parallel and yes not that it's not so clear which concept you use good good to know it seems that we have a question coming from roger noru yes hi um hi. Th thank you uh yeah helke lisa and johanna and johanna for a really really fascinating presentations i mean the projects sound um so cool and um it's so exciting that olu has um such a big part in these um i think one one thing that you know obviously sets the src projects apart is this sort of interaction engaged um research component and um speaking as uh, as one of the uh, a vice leader of one of the profi six um, programs. I remember us writing into uh, our application also that we wanted to engage with um, with citizen science and and bring the university into uh, say the Olu uh, municipal community um, and bring sort of scientists and research um, to to non scientists and non researchers. Um, and one thing that would be great to hear from from all of you over the next couple of years as your project um, develops. Um, because I think that engaged research is something that a lot of us think about and maybe write about, but doing it is actually a different thing. Um, and it would be super to be able to hear from you about how the project, how that aspect of the project is actually going. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, as an example, this living labs idea is so, um, it's so fertile um, and, you know, can, sounds like it can be so productive. So it would be, it would be great if you could come back and speak to, to, to all of us at the university, in particular, maybe some of the profis um, who also want to sort of do um, do engaged, um, you know, citizen science, um, and maybe have, um, you know, it's only one of the one component of, of many components of the of the profi programs, um, but it's something that I think you'll all have sort of a really useful and um, compelling perspective on as the projects develop on the on the next couple of years. So um, yeah, it would be great to hear um, in the future how that how that all progresses and and to be able to learn from you all. If I may briefly comment, so thank you very much for sure. Yes, yes, for sure. This is an important aspect. And I think it's not only for these two projects, but for the rest of the university community to how to do engaged research. It's in very important and crucial for us to find different innovative ways to do that, to be successful in horizon application, actually, and to make real a shift in the society towards this kind of more sustainable and resilient society. Yeah, we I are having such an interesting conversation. Maybe one more comment. We have two minutes left. So, Johanna, please, please go ahead. And I, I just want to say that uh, indeed, like uh, we have in our consortium one researcher who was in uh, as a researcher in a, a SRC project earlier, and she said she told us that, that her experience was that this collaboration between the ministries and what are other, you know, I don't know what they had in that project, but anyway, it was kind of never really, it never really realized in a way that is kind of like the ambition in the SRC projects that you actually truly collaborate and you truly produce something concrete that we are not just producing research, but we are actually taking that one step further. And especially, um, so that's why we decided to take this living lab here as a method because um, it's just not enough in this kind of project where we try to tackle these structural issues that we just say how things are in society. We actually have to do something about it. And uh, we had this meeting with the steering group and uh, Abdirahim Hussein, who's from the Moniheli Aru, he told us that, okay, we know that there's racism in Finnish labor market. We know this. You researchers, you can still research it. But what we need is actually, you know, you to help us what to do about it. So I think that this just, you know, there's no way other way of doing this research than really to truly collaborate and try to find these kinds of tools, how to tackle these issues. So I guess in short, I can come and talk about the Living Lab in two years time and see how it's going. Thank you. It seems that uh, this seminar already sparked some new collaboration, which is always great. And it's one of the main aims of brown bag lunch seminars. But at this point, I would like to thank you so much, the presenters and the audience for the interesting presentations and all these discussions. 
and uh, brown bag uh, blood seminar will be organized again in uh, January and I hope we can be live but let's see how that goes and please follow patio and the weekly newsletter for more information about the uh, next topics and the times and dates and like uh, where it will be organized but uh, one more time thank you very much all of you and have a wonderful Christmas